It seems like every season the Louisville football team loses to a team that either they weren't supposed to or they were at least favored to have as equal of a chance to win against. So on today's episode of the Locked on the Louisville podcast, we're going to talk about the top three potential trap games for the Cardinals this season. With that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked on Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Um, These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. I wanted to rank the top three potential trap games for the Louisville football program this upcoming year. Um, For me, it seems like there's three certainties. Death, taxes, and Louisville football losing to a team that they're not supposed to. Or you could even extend that to a team to where um, it's a 50, 50 shot and the Cardinals just drop the ball. So, um, seemingly it doesn't matter who the coach is, whether it has been Bobby Petrino, Charlie Strong, uh, Scott Satterfield, uh, Bobby Petrino twice. Um, it, it seems like Louisville usually almost every season loses a game to a team that they are 100% not supposed to lose to. So I wanted to rank the top three potential trap games. Now, in no way am I saying that they're going to lose a game to a team that they're not supposed to this season. Um, Actually, when we talk about these three, these, I guess you could classify them more as dangerously overlooked games, games that people might look at and say, well, They're supposed to win this game, so they're going to. I wanted to look at the three games that make the most sense that are going to be the most dangerous um, underneath the surface. When you look at the matchup, you might might say, oh, well, Louisville should win this game. And then when you actually look a little bit deeper into the matchup, it's like, "Eh, there's a possibility the team could lose if they don't handle their business. So we're going to talk about top three potential trap games, starting with number three. You see the hints on the right. Take this team seriously. That is the Duke Blue Devils. Louisville takes on Mike Elko's team on Saturday, October 28th. They host the Blue Devils right before Halloween. Um, And this is a Duke team that where when you think about Duke football, you're like, are we serious here? I mean, didn't Louisville just absolutely demolish them two years ago? I mean, this is a team that hasn't really ever been all that relevant throughout its history. I mean, they have a good season every now and again, but are they really that good? Well, look at what Duke did last year. They won nine games. They went nine and four. That was the best record for the program since 2014 under David Cutliffe. Um Mike Elko has completely turned this program around, seemingly heading into this upcoming season. I mean, you look at the improvement from when he wasn't the coach to where he is now. I mean, this team has improved, especially on the defensive end. Only allowed 22 points per game to their opponents last year, 378.2 yards per game. And you look at the notion that they almost allowed over 500 yards per game two years ago. And then the points per game obviously wasn't close either. So there's been extreme um, improvement for the Duke Blue Devils. Obviously, Mike Elko has that uh, very solid defensive background as well. So that's something that I think definitely plays into this. I think that this is a trip up game because of, you know, what Duke brings back to the table, Um, you know, or what what they bring back to the roster this season. I know that the schedule is harder than it was last season. So that's something you have to accept and you have to acknowledge saying that, hey, look, yeah, they won nine games, but they had a pretty favorable schedule. But um, looking at this team, 17 starters back from a year ago. So you have that experience, you have that continuity, and this is a Duke team that 
I think that Louisville is probably going to be favored to win this game. I don't think it's going to be by much. I am a big believer in Riley Leonard. I think that he's going to want, be one of the better dual threat quarterbacks in the country this past season. Statistically speaking, didn't have the greatest season last year, but got better as the year went along. 20 touchdowns to six interceptions, had a 64% passer rating, and also ran for just under 700 yards. So you have a dual threat quarterback. Um, now, granted, when you talk about how it's going to attack this level of defense, you have to automatically acknowledge that this is a de different defensive scheme. You can't talk about how this team played against Louisville or this team or any other team played against Louisville in years past because of the different defensive scheme. But overall, this is a Duke offense that has a ton of experience, not only at quarterback, but offensive line. They have a future first, maybe not first round pick, but a future NFL draft pick on the on the line, the receiving core with Jalen Calhoun and Eli Pankhole, um, they're two guys that's going to be able to be solid options once again for Leonard. And then you have Jalen Coleman and Jordan Waters at the running back committee. So you're going to have sort of a three-headed monster at running back. Defensively speaking, we talked about that improvement. Um, they're replacing their top two tacklers uh, in Darius Joyner and Shaka Hayward, but Dwayne Carter, uh, Jemai and Franklin, two seniors on that defensive line. There are eight players coming back on defense that started last year for Duke. So this is a trip-up game because a lot of times we overlook that Duke name. I think when you think Duke football, you're like, are we serious now? Why is this the team that we're stressing over? And I – Caution you to believe that because the Duke team that we're going to be talking about in 2023 is not the Duke team that you are used to talking about. I think that Mike Elko and Wes Johns have been able to turn this program around seemingly. Now, are they going to be able to beat Louisville on October 28th? Perhaps, perhaps not. I think that Louisville ultimately ends up beating Duke. But like I said, this is trap games. These are games that we're potentially overlooking. I think that a lot of fans could potentially overlook this Duke game simply because it's Duke. I've seen uh, people on social media say, yeah, Louisville should beat Duke pretty easily. That might be the case. They might end up doing that. However, I think that this is a team that could definitely give you fits. Sure, the schedule wasn't that great last year for Elko's squad, but they return a lot of players. They return a very, very respectable quarterback in Riley Leonard who – according to some people, is a top five quarterback in the ACC. He's a player that is going to continue to get better. I think that Wesley Johns at offensive coordinator is a huge component of that development for the team in Durham. And I think that ultimately Louisville should win this game. I think that Louisville is going to win this game, but it's all going to come down to whether or not that they take Duke seriously, which I think they will. And I'm not saying that, they're trap games because Louisville might take them. Louisville might not take them seriously. I'm just saying that they're trap games, it, almost pretty much for the fans that are looking at the schedule and thinking, okay, well, this ten and two talk is great. This nine and three talk is great. Um, there's some tough teams on the schedule like Notre Dame, Kentucky, potentially Miami. And Miami, I'll, I'll say this: Miami is not on this list because I think that they're going to be able to turn the, you know, the season or turn the a ball around in 2023. I think Mario Cristobal has a ton of talent in Coral Gables to where they're going to be able to be a lot better than last year. And to play the devil, devil's advocate, if they're not, then I don't necessarily think that uh, it's going to be a trip game so much because I think that teams are still going to respect Miami because it's Miami. I mean, it's like Clemson last year. Clemson was not as good as years prior, but you're still thinking, okay, they still have a chance to – or they, they're still going to give you their best game. Same thing when they came to Louisville two years ago. So Duke, for me, is the number three trap game on the schedule um, that you look at as, as a possible loss if you don't take care of business. This next one, however, is a program that had some considerable losses personnel-wise in the offseason. But please, don't let those losses fool you. We're going to talk about why here momentarily after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, LinkedIn Jobs. 
These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job on your profile with the purple hashtag hiring frame to show that you're hiring. You get simple tools at your disposal like screening questions that make it easy to focus on the candidates with the skill sets that you're looking for. Because let's be honest, adding the right team member is such a pivotal addition for the team when it comes to having a positive and measurable impact on your business. That alone is why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the right people for your team that you want to talk to faster Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, we spoke right before the break about how this next opponent had some losses in the offseason. But don't let those key losses fool you. This team is still going to be, at the very least, a respectable opponent. Number two is the Pittsburgh Panthers. Louisville will play them at Akershire Stadium Saturday, October 14th. Um, like Duke, Pittsburgh went 9-4 and four this past season. Louisville defeated them last October in sort of a toss-up 50-50 game. Not a pretty game by any stretch of the imagination offensively, but the Louisville defense got it done. Um, overall, Key losses for Pittsburgh, right? Um, Grant said they will have a new quarterback, which we'll talk about here in a second. But they lost Israel Abanacanda, one of not only the best running backs in the ACC, but really one of the best running backs in the country. You have ACC Player of the Year, Kalijah Kansi, who got drafted in the first round, which, um, you know, ACC Player of the Year, he was pretty solid, although I think that that award should have went to Viasir Abdullah. Kansi was still a force to be reckoned with within that Pittsburgh defensive line. They lost a handful of players. They only bring back, I think, five or six players defensively, but they brought some replacements in. They have some guys waiting in the wings. Uh, offensively speaking, I think that they upgraded quarterback. There was sort of a quarterback carousel. Keaton Slovis was just never the answer for the Panthers. They insert Phil Yurkovic, um, who is – I always forget how to pronounce his name. Phil Yurkovic, uh, Phil Jerkovic. Uh, I think it's Yurkovic, but I, I should have already known that. I do apologize. Um, but he is back in his hometown. Started in Notre Dame, went to Boston College, now – in his hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he reunites with his former offensive coordinator, Frank Signetti Jr. Um, he had some pretty solid seasons under Signetti in a couple seasons at Boston College. Obviously, like I said, you lose Izzy of Anaconda, but Rodney Hammond Jr. showed that when Izzy was out last year in the Sun Bowl, he won the MVP of the Sun Bowl. Uh, but Rodney Hammond is definitely more than capable of a replacement. I think that he is going to be one of the low-key best running backs in the conference. Um, this is an offense that definitely likes to put the ball on the ground and churn out yards that way. Um, offensive line-wise, they bring back a couple of the players on that line, um, and I think that Rodney Hammond Jr. is definitely going to benefit from the scheme and benefit from that offensive line. Um Kanata, Mumpfield, Bob Means, uh, Bob Means at wide receiver back, Gavin Bartholomew at tight end. So new quarterback, but you have some continuity at the skill positions for Pittsburgh. So offensively speaking, I think that they're going to be a team that maybe on paper they don't look all that great. They don't look like one of the ACC's best units, but Phil showed multiple times throughout his career, even the games against Louisville here and there, that – they can take down Louisville, um, and or he can take down Louisville. You know he's had some success against the Cardinals. You have some solid skill players. You have Rodney Hammond Jr. You have a solid offensive line. So although it might not be one of the ACC's best, it's still a respectable unit that you have to um, you know focus on and you can't overlook. Defensively speaking, look, you can replace players, and Pittsburgh is a program that consistently 
um, you know, produces some pretty solid collegiate players. Pat Narduzzi is one of the best defensive minds in the ACC. Since 2019, they have 199 sacks, which is leading the nation, and that is with the revolving door of talented players within that program. They did lose Kalaja Kansi, um, who was top two um, – or I'm sorry, he was actually number one, sorry, in the ACC Player of the Year voting. Uh, this is a defense that was number two in sacks last year, uh, top 25 in total defense. You bring back Bengali Kamara, Shane Simon. You have solid cornerback play as well. David Green is a player that I know that people are looking at on the Pittsburgh defense to be able to take that next step forward. So nonetheless, what I'm trying to say is that although Pittsburgh is a team that you look at and it's like, they might not inspire you. They might not be a team that goes to the playoff. They might not be a team that contends for the ACC championship. But I'm telling you, with the coaching scheme that they have in place, the players that they have in the trenches, the skill guys on offense, the guys at the linebacking core, uh, Phil Yurkovic at quarterback, I mean, I think that overall, maybe they didn't get better, but still this is a pretty respectable Pittsburgh team. I think they got better at quarterback. Probably got a little worse at running back, and that's no disrespect to Rodney. That's just how good Izzy Abanakanda was. Um, you're probably looking pretty solid at wide receiver, solid at tight end. Defensively speaking, you lose Kalijah Kansi, but solid cornerback play is back. You have uh, some solid linebackers, defensive line as well. And this is a system that has proven to be the epitome of next man up mentality. So I think that this Pittsburgh game, it's on the road. Uh, Pittsburgh has been a team that has overall, for the most part, since the Cardinals have joined the ACC, has given Louisville some fits. Um, Louisville did beat them last year, lost to them in 2020. Um, looking back to the to the previous meetings as well. This has been a team that, um, you know, Pat Narduzzi has had his teams always play pretty decently against Louisville. So this is just another matchup that you have to focus on and you can't overlook, especially where it's at in the schedule. It's after NC State. Um, it's right after Notre Dame as well. So especially if you were to come off of a win against Notre Dame and riding that high into this matchup, it could definitely be a trap matchup considering that I think Pittsburgh is a tough team to play, especially on the road, which, I mean, it's hard to play any team on the road in conference play. Anyone will tell you that. Um, but nonetheless, I think that Pittsburgh is the team that's going to represent number two for me because of Pat Narduzzi, because of some of the players on this team and where it's at on the schedule. So, but number one, this team, it seems now granted, there's been some games to where they haven't played the Louisville all that well, but playing here and playing against this team, I think poses some challenges. And we're going to talk about that game. What game represents the number one trap game here momentarily? Before we do that, I want to thank you all again for making Locked On the Louisville your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that the show is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. If you haven't seen it on the channel, there was a uh, conference-wide Locked On ACC preview that featured all of the hosts of the various Locked On ACC schools, including yours truly, talking about Louisville. But nonetheless, a lot of people talking about the teams that they cover in one setting. Do yourself a favor. Go check that out. If you want to learn about the ACC landscape, if you want to learn about how respective insiders see their respective teams, if you want to learn about some of the opponents that Louisville's going to play upcoming this season, no better place to find that. Then they locked on ACC season preview that was just dropped on Monday afternoon. So, and then there was one. The number one trap game for Louisville this season is Friday, September 29th, 7 p.m. kickoff against the NC State Wolfpack in Raleigh, North Carolina. Louisville has. It's been a, a love-hate relationship with playing down in North Carolina. 
um, you're playing NC State specifically. You look at Louisville had some pretty solid success early on playing the Wolfpack when they joined the ACC back in 2014. 2017, they lost to the Wolfpack on a weekday night with Lamar Jackson. Uh, 2019, they ended up beating NC State in a Saturday night game. It was a very, very sloppy game. 2018, they lost, obviously, big. I mean, 2018, they lost to pretty much everyone outside of two teams, uh, and none of those were conference teams. 2020 um, was a situation to where the season was what it was. Uh, 2021, things got to be you know, a little bit back to normal. Louisville went back down to North Carolina State, lost. They had a three-point lead going into the fourth quarter and actually ended up getting blown out in that quarter. And then Louisville defeated NC State this past year, both teams not having their starting quarterbacks, uh, both Devin Leary and Malik Cunningham out for that matchup. But they play against an NC State team on a Friday night on the road. And I think that this just spells danger Obviously, Louisville can take care of business like they did in 2019, and in no way am I suggesting that they won't. But I think that this is low-key going to be one of the top three toughest matchups of the season. Number one, considering context. What time? It's a Friday night primetime game, 7 o'clock kickoff. It's going to be um, a rowdy atmosphere in Raleigh. Uh, NC State fans really are able to pack that football stadium, and it's i mean, it, it, it's a tough environment. I mean, I've talked to some former Louisville players that played in 2017 uh, and in 2019, and they said, you know, look, that's a tough place to play, especially when it's a night game and it's going to be a night game. So I think that that alone offers itself into this consideration of top three trap games. Um, NC State went eight and five in 2022. Um, Most notably offensively, they bring in Brendan Armstrong from Virginia, Robert Anai, at offensive coordinator who coached Brendan Armstrong at Virginia, coached Syracuse when the Orange beat Louisville in the season opener last year. Now, granted, like I said, you can't really make too many comparisons when there's a whole new defensive scheme for Louisville, but Robert and I has had a ton of success against the Cardinals uh, play calling. So that's something to focus on that I think the NC State's offense is going to be better, and he has a quarterback that has played under him before, knows his uh, scheme, and I think that that's something to focus on. Now there is some, there is a revolving door at wide receiver at this point with Thayer Thomas um, not being on the team any longer, but you have Jordan Houston at running back still. There's still some questions at wide receiver and tight end. You bring back three offensive line starters. So offensively speaking, this is going to be a very, very solid NC State team. I think that this NC State team has the potential to really throw a wrench in the ACC standing. So that's something to focus on here. And then defensively speaking, look, I mean, NC State has one of the best defensive coordinators, not only in the conference, but the country as well in Tony Gibson. They bring back six starters, one of them being Peyton Wilson at the linebacker position, a guy that was probably projected to go to the NFL and he shocks everyone and decides to come back. So you have, that, um, you know, that veteran leadership back. And then you have Savion Jackson on the edge, who's a player that they are looking to have a big season. Um, And then you have a very, very solid cornerback duo. Safety position has some question marks, but the cornerback duo, all ACC selection, Aiden White and Shaheem Battle are going to form one of the ACC's best cornerback tandems. So that's something to focus on. So defensively, they're going to be right where we're used to them being very, very solid. One of the best coach units in the conference. And then offensively speaking, I could definitely see this team taking a next step forward under Dave Doran with Robert and I. I think that that is a very sneaky, good hire for the NC State Wolfpack. And what better way to try to maximize this season for an eye in his first year than bringing in a very experienced quarterback who's coming off of a rough season last year for Virginia. But overall, Brandon Armstrong has about 9,000 passing yards in his career. He's a veteran player that's played in this league before. He's a guy that uh, can throw all over the field and is a big-time playmaker if you allow him that opportunity. Does not need a ton of space to be able to thread the needle, and he gets to reunite with a former offensive coordinator that he saw a ton of success with. So this is the number one trip-up game for me for the Louisville Cardinals because of all of the ingredients that are going into this. 
you have a night game on the road Friday night on primetime, 7 o'clock. That alone right there gets you into consideration. It's a road game. It's also a team that has shown that has an atmosphere that can make you struggle. Louisville has struggled here and there against NC State uh, in the past three matchups on the road against NC State. The Cardinals have lost, and um, not to mention defensively, they're going to be respectable. They have some holes here and there, but they bring back some solid pieces as well. And offensively, I think that they're going to be better overall. So number three, hosting Duke Saturday, October 28th. Number two, on the road at Pittsburgh Saturday, October 14th. And number one at NC State, Friday night, 7 o'clock kickoff, September 29th. They all come in that three-game, or I'm sorry, that four-game stretch with NC State, Notre Dame, um, Pittsburgh and Duke, that is why that that four-game stretch is going to really determine how successful this year is going to be for Louisville. But that's going to wrap up today's episode of the show. To find the show on all platforms, be sure to stay tuned to this graphic. But outside of that, everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.